Thanks for the talk about small impact analysis and stochastically illiquid markets. This is joint work with Ulrich Horst from Multi University in Berlin. Now, as our starting point, we take the optimal liquidation model of Grave and Horst, and these parameters are fixed, and we introduce the control the trading rate xi, which is the rate how fast we're selling a single asset that we want to liquidate in the end of the time horizon. We access the single asset and we start at x0. And in time t, we want to have this asset liquidated. And we also have a process y, which is the price impact. So it's kind of a deviation between the exogenous price and the real price. And this deviation comes from our trading. So because we are selling into the limit order book, the price changes. And this is the dynamics of this effect. Gamma is a limit order book parameter. And rho is the resilience rate. So if we don't trade, then the price impact recovers over time. And it starts at zero. This is the optimization problem. We have a cost function. First term is the cost of the instantaneous price impact. So eta is the instantaneous price impact parameter. And if the trading rate is large, then we have a high loss due to the instantaneous price impact. And the second term is the transient price impact cost. If y is large, if the price impact, so that if the price deviation between exogenous price and real price is large and we're trading fast, then we have to pay high costs. And the last term is the market risk. Lambda is the market risk aversion parameter. And we want to minimize this cost. And this problem is solved already, but we're interested in the behavior if eta is going to zero. So if instantaneous price impact parameter is small. If we look at simulations, this is deterministic case. We have a comparison to the model of Obijayeva 1 that is uh, many years old already, and that they uh, introduced this model with transient price impact, but without instantaneous price impact. So it's kind of intuitive that if the instantaneous price impact disappears, we come close to this model. But uh, what is surprising here is that in our original model, we have instantaneous price impact, which leads to the restriction that we only have absolutely continuous trading strategies, whereas in Obasheva Wang we have jumps. And now we are approximating these jumps with absolutely continuous trading strategies. And what works in the deterministic case may also work in the stochastic case, will eventually work. This is what we want to prove that we have a limit also in the stochastic case, so the inventory processes converge. First of all, we recall what Grave and Horst did. They proved that we have to consider this Ricard equation for A, B, and C with terminal conditions that you see there. And yeah, due to the liquidation constraints, x, t is zero. We have this kind of singularity, A, t goes to infinity as t goes to capital T. And the system is not defined for eta equals zero. So we cannot just say if eta goes to zero, we look at, we plug in eta equals zero. No, this doesn't work. We have to make another approach. But first of all, I just recall how we get to the solution in the original model. And this is uh, the theorem which summarizes this. So the above uh, BSD system imposed with a singular terminal condition, that's a unique solution, A, B, and C. And the optimal trading strategy is given by this term. So if we solve this equation, we have the optimal trading rate. In our case, we want to impose an additional condition. We say that random parameters, lambda and rho, have to be driven by neutral diffusion. So lambda is the market risk aversion parameter, rho is the resilience rate. And we introduce this diffusion with Lipschitz continuous and bounded coefficients. Uh, bounded coefficients is kind of yeah, a restriction, but we think that this is reasonable because, I mean, it's only bounded, it's not... Uh, constant or something like this. And yeah, they are probably needed to get the results we want to get. And specifically, we assume that rho and lambda are 
c1 two functions of this diffusion so first lemma is the following we look at this quadratic bsd and it has a unique solution b0 z 0 b where b0 is bounded so if b0 is bounded then there is only one solution this is not quite straightforward because of this quadratic term and the bsd but what is interesting here the b0 process is uniformly continuous function of the diffusion we have just introduced and we have in the literature already that this function is continuous but not that it's uniformly continuous and we will need this in order to prove this property that says that increments of b0 are not too large which is a regularity property we need for many many things we want to do we have introduced this b0 as a limit candidate for b eta and if we assume that this works we can also expect that d eta and e eta which are given in these forms they converge to functions of b0 and they can be represented as uniform functions of the factor process in fact and both processes so d0 and e0 satisfy this regularity condition as well and this regularity property will carry over to the limiting and entry process if we rearrange terms we get the following representation of b0 originally we only had b0 on the right hand side of the bsd but now we can also put d0 and e0 there and then we see that we have similar bsds for b0 and b eta this is what we hope for converged in fact if we define small b eta small b eta small e eta as the deviations of these processes we can prove that there exists such a function e eta zero such that maximums of the deviations are small up to capital t but without capital t and we have to pay attention on the one side of the x-axis because uh, we have the singularity condition that a goes to infinity if t goes to capital t this is where we don't have this second inequality until t but only until t minus epsilon but for all epsilon now we introduce this here yeah, differentiable process and then we expect that x0 and y0 which we want to be the limits of the state processes are given in this form and we expect that the limiting processes jump only at the initial and the terminal time as we have seen in the picture before now we can prove that x0 is a zimmer martingale and it also satisfies this regularity condition again and our last theorem yeah needs this definition completed graph of a catalog function x if x has jumps then we just connect the two points from the left and from the right and then we have the completed graph and the distance of two completed graphs is just given as a Hausdorff distance then the theorem says that there's a function such that the distance of the graph of x eta and the graph of x zero in the original model where eta is positive the completed graph of, of the optimal inventory process converge to this x0 graph a few words on the mathematics everything hinges on the representation of the inventory process in terms of the uniformly continuous function of the factor process so you see that we we had this regularity properties dominating all the mathematical considerations so this is really important this is why we had this restriction on bounded uh, diffusion coefficients and we need a convergence result for integral equations of the form you see there so we want to prove that this uh, small b goes to zero if, if some conditions hold if eta goes to zero and uh, the tricky thing here is that we can all only expect that this martingale there on the right hand side is a martingale not on the whole time interval but only on, on every time interval that does not include t and this is the second thing that is really tricky we need a convergence result for integral equations of the following form in order to prove that processes like small d and small e which are even more complicated than small b converge to zero as well if eta converges to zero and what is also interesting here is that x zero 
the process of infinite variation and uh, the quadratic variation is non-trivial and it can be approximated by absolute infinite process x eta so this is something we take out of our work which is really uh, surprising that we can really approximate the process of with the uh, diffusion part by absolutely continuous processes and uh, this kind of uh, naturally comes from this optimization problem.